Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Glad to have you on the show today. I'm Tom Sinclair. It's time for that Vid Blaster guy. And if you're watching us live, you know we're a little late getting on the air. Uh, have had a, uh, whoops, where'd I go? Oh, there I am. Have had a myriad of problems today. And funny, one of the subjects for the show today was, what do you do when things go bad? Mm, amazing. We'll get to that in just a second. Remember our show theme, one guy with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. And today does not qualify for an awesome broadcast. Today is a terrible broadcast. We've had to switch over to uh, a backup feed because our main uh, service went down, apparently. Uh, we've had to switch over to a third internet uh, service here because our first and second internet services went out due to a thunderstorm. Um, it has been a trial by fire. Uh, so I appreciate those of you that are watching uh, live and those of you that are watching recorded. Well, you, you kind of missed all the excitement. Um, Typically, we, we'll have a guest on the show that will talk about uh, either church broadcasting or sports broadcasting or talk show broadcasting, and so we didn't have a, an opportunity for that today, um, not because of all the problems we've had, but just because in, in the planning, it just, just didn't work out that day. But uh, wanted to, to, we've got a good question and answer session coming up here in a little bit, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, rookie mistakes Boy, did I make one uh, the other day. And then, of course, what do you do when things go bad? But um, today, I want to start off by saying, answering the question, why did we move to Wednesday? Well, we moved to Wednesday because Tuesday was just getting so booked up with tech shows about broadcasting. When we started back in July of 2012, uh, we were about the only show on Tuesdays. Um, our, our friends at, uh, let's see, Studio Tech Live were on Fridays, uh, broadcast now with Stephen uh, uh, Haygood had gone into hiatus, um, and um, we, just weren't, we just weren't having any competition on Tuesdays. And then suddenly the dam opened and everybody moved to Tuesdays, and rather than, uh, and two reasons for moving the show. One is uh, want to give you the opportunity to watch some really good shows. Um, uh, Broadcast Now is, is, a, is a great show. I've enjoyed watching that. Studio Tech Live is a great show. I've enjoyed watching that. Both of those have to do with internet broadcasting. And then Andrew Zirian and, and Paul Therott on what the tech is, is good tech stuff too. And that's on Tuesdays. So not going to fight the crowd. We move to Wednesdays. There's the explanation right there. So from now on out, that vid blaster guy, will be on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock in London, except when we have this crazy time change thing for daylight savings time and British summertime when it happens different, uh, different times of the, of the month in different places. And also, uh, you know, kind of a hat tip to our friends in Australia. Uh, we've loved having you watch us live by getting up early in the morning, but I believe now that uh, your, your daylight savings time is over. Uh, it means that it's 4.30 uh, or so, well, I guess probably 4 o'clock in the morning when we come on, and that's, that's too early for us to ask you to, to get up. So, glad to, uh, glad to have you with us today, despite all the troubles. Um, just to recap briefly, had, uh, had internet problems, had a big thunderstorm in the area, knocked out our cable, so I went to uh, my backup, which was a Verizon Wi-Fi card. That didn't work. That got knocked out. Went to my uh, new, well, new to me, uh, Samsung Galaxy 4, and uh, also with Verizon, go figure, and was able to get that to pick up. So we got on the air. Uh, we don't have a lot of bandwidth. We just have a little bit of bandwidth today. I think uh, I measured it at about, about 6 megs up and 2.5 meg. excuse me, 6 megs down and 2.5 and megs up. So we are bandwidth challenged, and the bandwidth is fluctuating up and down. Uh, it's just a bad day for bandwidth. And to top that off, we found out that DeCast, for some reason, was not receiving our feed. Don't know what the problem was. Don't know whether it was part of the Internet problems. So we switched over to Bamboozer and uh, threw up a link on the website. So hopefully you're watching us live. If you're in the chat room uh, you and hearing me, then you're watching live. Uh, if not, let me put this link in the chat room one more time. Uh, Watch here. There we go. So, 
what a day. What a day. And the day actually started out again um, with uh, all sorts of video problems. So we had to uninstall some video drivers and, and change things around. It was a great, it was, it was terrible is what it was, but it was also a great opportunity to learn what it's like again. How do you feel when things go bad? And sometimes when things go bad, they, they mound up on top of each other. And today was one of those days. And I'll give you a tip, having been through this in the, in the pressure of the moment. Um, you just have to take a deep breath. If you're a believer, it's a good time to say a prayer. And exhale. And then move on and try to solve the problems one at a time. Don't take them on all at once. Don't panic. Don't worry. If, if it's important, people will wait. And if not, well, oh well. We'll, we'll do better next time. One of the rookie mistakes that I heard, that, that I made, uh, I guess it was last week. After the show, I was reconfiguring my profile and changing Viblaster around a little bit to suit me. And I decided, um, oh, I, and I had, a, I had a problem. It was a problem, I think it was with the, the video drivers uh, that bothered me this morning. And so I decided to uninstall Viblaster and then uh, download the latest beta. I, I was running version 2.27 and then uh, downloaded version 2.33, which is the latest beta, 2.27 is the latest release. And so I uninstalled 2.27 because I wanted to get it out of there. I was afraid there was, you know, somehow my hard drive had gotten corrupted. And so, um, or, or maybe the software had gotten corrupted somehow, you know, how you can get a glitch in your system sometime. And so I decided to uninstall Viblaster and then reinstall the new version. What I forgot was, I forgot to make a copy of my profiles, which are on the VidBlaster program directory. And so when I uninstalled it, I lost all my profiles. And so I ended up with the default profile as being the own, I, I did have a couple other profiles tucked away somewhere from where I, where I had saved them previously. But I didn't have this wonderful, glorious 33 module profile that I'd very carefully built with chroma keys and video effect modules that were all talking to each other. And, and basically had to create that from scratch today. So in addition to straightening out a video problem, rebuilding my profile, finding my third internet provider that would work, and a second CDN that would work, that took all my show prep time. I'm really frustrated with that. I had a great show intended for you guys, and I've got some of it together. So we're just going to have to sort of wing it with the part that I've got. Um, let's see. Wanted to start off first, and oh, let me put a, a note uh, in the chat room. There we go, so folks can watch us live. And uh, the rookie mistake, yeah, the rookie mistake, make sure you copy your profiles. Um, I've got a question and answer time that I want to I want to bring up for you here in just a little bit, but I wanted to throw another tip. Um, for those of you that are broadcasting out of anything but a professional studio, you may encounter difficulties with audio. You may be in a, in a room that has a lot of flat surfaces and so you're getting a lot of echo. You may be in a room with a lot of, uh, a lot of ambient noise. I've got a computer down here at my feet that makes uh, less of a racket now, but used to make a pretty good racket. And so I would recommend, let me turn around here for just a second and grab one of them. I would recommend, and this is not my recommendation, but these are good old moving blankets. They were about, Mm, $2.50 a piece. And I have lined the walls of my, of my studio here with those to try to absorb some of the noise that would other bounce, otherwise bounce up. And I've sort of mounted them around my PC down here at my feet for, in order to try to absorb some of that sound. And that helped an awful lot. Hat tip to Mike Phillips for that one. Uh, he said that was definitely the way to go. I tried the, uh, let's see, I've got one here. I tried these uh, little foam things, but either this is the wrong kind of foam or the wrong shape or both, but they do make an excellent rest for a keyboard and as a way to keep it quiet from bouncing and making a lot of extra noise. So when it comes to sound, um, do what you can to deaden your room. Um, and for me, that, that helped a ton. So that's just a little tip that I'll, I'll pass along. Um, let's go. Oh, I know what I wanted to do before we went much further. Let me see if I can cue it up right here. 
Um, my good friend David Stemper, who is a VidBlaster user, has just built a VidBlaster PC. And let's see if I can get his. And he sent me a he sent me a video about it. So we're gonna cue that up and I'm gonna show you David Stemper's new PC. Alright, this is the rig I built for recording the performances. And what I did is I have it on this little cart. Got a yard sale for about five bucks. And I've got a power bar and power strip that I put all this stuff on there to plug it in. And then I just put a little 15 inch monitor on the front. Um, it's not like I access much of any of the ports on the front anyway. It's a little keyboard and mouse. And then all the sound goes through the, the board up there. I don't have anything hooked up to it currently. But I uh, can operate four cameras, different angles, back, front, two on the side. And uh, works pretty well for me. Um, a couple more performances should pay off everything. And I will show you what this what I've done with it. Okay, and some of the guys in the chat room said we didn't have any audio there on that one. Boy, that's a shame, because the next one was even better. Um, basically, David was, was showing that uh, he had built this PC that he was really excited about. I do it. And uh, had mounted it on a cart, and you saw, you saw it all. Um, so you can hear me, but you can't hear that. That's really wild, because I've got every input I, th I thought turned up. Well, then, we were going to go on to the next one. Let's see. Which was this, this great shot right here, which included um, all the, the music that went along with it. So we'll just uh, we'll have to forego the music. But this is basically what David was working on, uh, was a show. Um, a uh, bluegrass show. These fellas um, are doing uh, a show that David recorded, and he was able to to set up some static cameras and change cameras. Uh, we're using VidBlaster to do a screen capture on this, which is probably why we're not getting any audio on it. You saw a little bit of uh, uh, the effects of uh, not having the deinterlacer on as they had some quick movement and you saw the little lines there, but uh, that's that's easy to fix. Wish you could hear the music. It's, it's, it's really great on this end. So we'll have to work on that one for next time. So if you're just joining us, glad to have you with us. We uh, have not had a good day, as it were. Things have not been working well here between a thunderstorm and other problems with, uh, with our uh, CDN on the other end. So let's move on to, uh, to our question and answer session, which I think uh, hopefully will, will be a lot of fun. Um, and let me go all the way back to the beginning here. Again, you know, apologies for a show that's not well prepared. It was uh, a, a day from hell. Probably every day of the week, I get somebody that either calls me or emails me with a question. And I thought, you know, there's some really great questions out there. And, and as I started answering the same question a time or two, I thought, you know, maybe we should try to get this information out a little bit more, a little, a little wider. Um, uh, most of the information that I want to share is, is available in the VidBlaster wiki. It's probably in the, the VidBlaster forum somewhere. But since these questions were addressed to me, I thought I would, I would share them with you and share the answers. And for these guys that have, have submitted these questions and anybody else that wants to submit a question that, we, that you would like to use on this show, um, or, or excuse me, anybody that submitted a question that, that we end up using on this show would like to send you a prize. Uh, having it figured out exactly what the prize will be, I'm leaning towards making, uh, giving you a credit towards the purchase of VidBlaster or any of the other products we sell or a VidBlaster upgrade. Um, so if you've got some feelings on that, let me know. But uh, let's go on to the, the first question. And this is from Paul in London. 
Uh, he said he noticed in a few videos that uh, I said I was using a Logitech 920 as my main camera, but then in another video, I mentioned I was using a camcorder. He said he's watched a couple of the videos on a 55-inch TV earlier, and they still came out very clear and was wondering what I was using. As additionally, he said he noticed that some of the guests didn't seem to have as good, good of a video quality. Well, there is a reason for that, Paul from London. Um, number one, yes, my main camera is the Logitech C920. Um, number one, it's, it's got a great picture. I'm not asking it to do a lot. I'm not asking it to zoom or pan or, or do any of the kinds of things you might use a camcorder for. Um, and for my purposes with a standard definition show, it works pretty well. Gives me a, a good um, live video and then gives me a good recorded video that we upload later to YouTube. The, um, the occasions where we use, and let's see, I think I've got one here that's available. Well, just as soon as I say that, I don't. Um, the occasions that we use a camcorder, um, I've got a camera set up here over my left shoulder that comes down onto my desktop, and it shows what's going on with the keyboard and the mixer and the monitors in front of me. And then sometimes I'll set up a, a camera to focus in uh, on a product that I'll have set up on the desktop, um, both static cams. Uh, one of them is a, is a Canon Vixia. Uh, HF100, not a very high quality camera. I think it was a 250 off of eBay, um, but it has a pretty clear picture and it, it has great zoom. I use those. I have two of them. I use those in my sports broadcasting because they have a really good picture even with a tight zoom. The other cams I use uh, are some Canons, the old Canon GL1s, um, and they do a pretty good job. They're a little soft on the, on the long end of the zoom, and so I tend to use those for close up shots. I think the Vixia has a little better color, and the Canons, you know, they're getting kind of old, so they, they may be sort of fading away. The other reason why the uh, my video looks good as compared to the guest is because I'm bringing them in on Skype, and at this point we don't have a way to, to pull the Skype video in directly from Skype. Um, haven't discovered a method, haven't discovered a, a hack for being able to do that. So we'll use a screen capture for our Skype guests and then route the audio in as well. So, Paul from London, hope that answers your question. That's why, uh, that's the camera we use, and, and that's how, uh, how I look as good as I do, as the case may be. Next question. Is there a way to take the program module picture, the output, and route it to a TV set or other monitor? Just the program picture, not the whole thing you see on the computer with the modules and, the, and uh, all the other desktop, but the program picture. Um, this is from Lee in Illinois. He said, I'd like to be able to get up from the desk and walk to a chroma key wall and do a weather presentation. I just retired from being a chief meteorologist at a TV station after 49 years of broadcasting. Well, Lee, I love your question. Uh, it's a great question. And there are a couple different ways that we can answer it. Um, if you wanted to display, and let me, let me flip back to my original camera shot. This is my camera shot, just a green screen. So, yes, you, you can do that. Um, in VidBlaster, VidBlaster has great chroma, chroma key. Let me go ahead and key out that green background. And you can use any backdrop you want. In this case, let me, uh, let me peel this one apart a little bit. What I've done is I've started with this background. And that's the, the, the formation of it. I've taken this shot, which is my PowerPoint shot, and I've used it as a picture-in-picture picture over top of my background shot. And then I've keyed both those out and brought myself in over top of the shot. And then on top of that, let's find that module right there. There we go. I've used a source overlay module to lay in the lower third. And so in order to output this, I would use something called the video out module. And the video out module can be set to output the video to the VidBlaster VVD, which is what we're doing right now, and that's being picked up by Flash Media Live Encoder. Or if you have a second or third monitor on your computer, or if, if for example, you want to set up a TV set um, as a second monitor, and you can certainly do that. I've done that really successfully. 
then you would simply tell the video out module that your, your source is the program, that is what we see right here, uh, that includes the, the, the PowerPoint, the background, the lower third, and the camera. So four different elements in this shot. And you would use that as the source. And then as the destination, you would have your television set or your second monitor, which would be in the video out in the video out mod module would be one of the, the actual choices that you could select as a destination. And then once you select it and click on, poof, it appears right there on the uh, the TV set. It's really a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And that's you know that's that's the intriguing stuff about this technology. It, it's just it's just a lot of fun. Okay. So that was Lee in Illinois. Lee, thank you for your question. Appreciate that. And let's move on to Leroy's question. He says he wants to place a... Ah, this is a great question. He wants to put a PowerPoint presentation into a monitor in a virtual set. But the monitor on the virtual set is at an angle, and the PowerPoint presentation looks odd because it doesn't match the angle of the monitor. Is there a way to angle the PIP so it will match the angle of the virtual wall monitor? Well, Leroy, I think that is an outstanding question. And there is a slim possibility that you can do that all in VidBlaster. And there is, a, let's see if I can set it up here real quick for you. There is a video effect called, let's see if I can find it here, Split Vertical 3D. And we're going to set up the shot that you're looking at me on, which is video effect number six. And if your set has this exact angle, then you can uh, you can crop that down and and pop it in there. You would want to uh, to set this on a green background, of course. But that's how you could do it if you got lucky and it was set at that precise angle. If it wasn't set at that precise angle, you could take uh, the PowerPoint presentation as a series of individual JPEGs and uh, import them into Photoshop or something like that and use Photoshop to skew it at whatever the angle was and then uh, output that as a graphic with a green background. And so you can key that out and pop it right in there. Uh, would take a little work. But once you had the template set up and, and knew exactly where the placement was, uh, you could do it time and time again. Great question, Leroy. Appreciate the questions. If you have a question, um, would love to have you to fire it over to me, Tom at that vidblasterguy.com, and I will do my very best to answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll do some playing around and, and find out or talk to somebody wiser than I. And there certainly are plenty plenty of folks that are that are wiser than I. Uh, also would, would make mention that um, we've added our website is atrocious. I'm not a website guy and, and just wanted to have something up there so that you could go and find the archives and find a live show and find things. But but visually, our website is atrocious. If you're a website guy and want to help me out, I, I desperately need help and I'd love to, to hear from you. But we've added a, a, a new item to the, the website and basically it's just an email sign up. If you would like a notice of um, our next show, what the subject matter will be, any changes in the program, anything like that, we, we send out a weekly email uh, reminding folks of the, excuse me, reminding folks of the show, and talking about uh, what's going to be on it and some of the things going on with Vid Blaster. If you'd like to be added to that list, we've got a couple hundred folks on the list right now. Uh, just send me an email, and or no, excuse me, there's a form on the website. Just click the uh, the email uh, sign up link and uh, sign up, and we will add you to the list and make sure that you get notice of that whatever the changes are, like, hey, a change to a Wednesday. So that's what we've got today, uh, a change to a Wednesday. Appreciate all of you that are watching live that are sort of suffering through this show uh, for all the many problems that we've had in this. It has not been a, a distinctly pleasant live experience, um, but we will continue to work on that. Uh, let's see. One of the questions that, that's come up that uh, I haven't had an opportunity or didn't have an opportunity to, to queue up as a question had to do with, uh, with really with hardware. I uh, was talking with someone yesterday about, uh, you know, we were trying, he was trying to connect three uh, USB webcams 
to a laptop um, that had five USB ports. And he would get two of them connected, and then the third one would make everything go screwy. Um, the same thing would happen when he had, uh, you know, a webcam and an easy cap or something like that and tried to put in a third one. Things got screwy. And the explanation that, that I have read and I believe to be true is that the number of USB ports does not necessarily equal the number of USB controllers. And that one USB controller might very well control more than one port. Uh, and it's really, the, from my understanding, it's really the controller that is the limiting factor in the ability of that USB to communicate uh, back, not back and forth, but, but in order to communicate the video to the PC. A video, obviously, is a, is a really uh, wide signal um, because there's so much going on with video as opposed to a, a plugging in a USB um, uh, audio mixer of some kind where the audio is not going to be nearly as broad a bandwidth as the video is. So you figure, you know, one one device like a webcam per controller. Well, how do you know how many controllers you have and how can you find out? Um, if you will go to, um, let's see if I can do, can I do that here? Yeah, I bet I can do that here. I like to do my demos in advance and kind of have them live, I mean recorded so that you can see them. But let's see if we can do this. Um, this is a screen capture of the control panel in my PC. And I'm going to go to System and Security. And I'm going to go to Device Manager. And that's going to pop up another window. Let me drag that window in here. Here we go. And of the different devices, I've got the universal serial bus controllers, the USB controllers. So let's expand that, and then let me move that window up where you can see better. And you can see that I've got two Behringer USB audios, two generic hubs, two Intel 6 series C200 series chipset family controllers, a Logitech USB cam, and a USB root hub, two of those. If I right click on the Behringer and go to properties, that brings up a window. And let me drag that window down where you can see a little better. And it tells me that I am on location, port number five, hub number four. Aha, uh -huh. now we're beginning to figure it out a little bit. Let me click OK. Remember that that's five and four for my first Behringer USB. Now, you say, why do, why do you have two Behringer USB audio drivers going right here? Well, because I essentially I have two Behringer USB sound cards. One is the Behringer, uh, my mixer, my X1204 USB, and the other is my Behringer UCA202, which is essentially a, a, a portable sound card that allows you to use uh, a USB as a way to, to input audio into your PC. So we'll select the second one, check properties. Remember the first one was, uh, was port five and hub four. The second one is port six in hub three. So I've got my mixers on two different hubs. That's good news. Let's go down and check the Logitech webcam and see where I've got that. And that's on port two, hub three also. So I've got on Hub 3, I've got two devices. One is my mixer, one is my webcam. If I were to plug another webcam, or for example, if I were to unplug that USB mixer and plug it in somewhere else and then plug a webcam into that port, it probably would co conflict with the uh, Logitech C920 with two webcams on the same controller. So if you've got a, uh, if you've got a laptop, for example, and you're not sure uh, what your ports are, go again to control panel. Um, let me walk back that walk back that through with you. Go to the control panel, select, uh, well, let's see, system and security. Yeah, there we go. System and security, select device manager, and then in device manager, you can select 
the USB controllers and right click check properties and that'll check tell you the port and the hub number so you can determine whether or not you are sharing or trying to share too many hubs or too many devices on the same hub. I hope I explained that right. So that's a, that's a good way to check and see how you're doing so far as, as uh, USB webcams is concerned. And for the folks that are doing uh, studio talk shows, a USB webcam is a great way to, uh, to bring video in for a variety of people. The new Logitech, uh, I think it's a C930E, will be coming out next month, we hear. It's going to be about 100, uh, between $120 and $130 US. And it will be a, uh, I have to check the specs on it, but some sort of super widescreen. Uh, so I'm imagining it's, it's almost a panorama screen that will, uh, will be, have some real interesting possibilities with it. Um, it will be high definition, and my understanding is that it will be such high definition that if you were to uh, take a larger shop shot and just crop a portion of it, that there would be enough definition in this portion to make this a high definition portion. Uh, so if you had a panel of four people all at the same table and you had one Logitech C930E webcam, you could configure it using VidBlaster to look as if you had five cameras in the room, one for the wide shot, and then do a series of picture in pictures and crop out the rest of the, the shot um, for the individual. So that has a lot of possibility. We'll just have to see how it really works out when the camera comes out, whether it's got a high enough resolution in order to do that. But uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun when that happens. Um, something else that's coming down the pike um, I, I can't wait to get my hands on one of those cameras. Um, and I've, so I've been saving up my nickels to do that. So something else that's coming down the pike is, uh, in fact, I was hoping it was going to be delivered yesterday, but it's going to be tomorrow before it gets here. I've ordered a, a Korg um, MIDI uh, control, and that basically plugs in USB and allows the, uh, the VidBlaster API to be controlled by this little control surface. And uh, I can't wait to get my hands on that and play around with that. I think one of the great possibilities with that, since, uh, since VidBlaster has not been configured to work with a specific control surface for the third generation instant replay, is that I can use this, this core controller to come up with a way to basically press one button uh, and then maybe adjust a slider to get an instant replay that, that either slows down or speeds up. Um, we'll have to see. I'm not sure if it'll go backwards or not. But if that's the case, uh, that's going to be a huge breakthrough, I think, for folks that are doing sports, sports broadcasting. The, the uh, instant replay third version is a little cumbersome to use right now. So if, if you're doing the old Tom Sinclair, one man, you know, one PC, one awesome broadcast kind of thing, uh, you're not going to really be able to pull it off and show replays, you know, frequently, because it's it, it, it's a little cumbersome to do all of that with the mouse. You're going to have to really get practiced practiced to do it. But with a control surface that has uh, certain sort of decisions already made for you, that is the duration of the clip and how far back you want to go and and uh, what percentage of the, the full speed that you want to play the clip at, uh, or the ability to modify that just by hitting a wheel or a dial as opposed to having to take a mouse and drag something up or drag it over. I think that's going to be really huge. So that's kind of my next project uh, and a great opportunity for me to, to dig into the API and, uh, and work with that. So those of you that, uh, that know the BidBlaster API, I'll probably be calling on you to give me some assistance with that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Let me check and see if we've got some, some questions here in the chat room. And see if we can get into any of this. We'll check here. Don't don't see any. We'll have to go back and, and take a look. Well, guys, we've got a kind of an abbreviated show today because we had such disaster uh, earlier. Not VidBlaster related, but Internet and CDN related and PC related. Vid, in fact, VidBlaster was the only thing that worked reliably through the whole thing. Um, so we're going to end this show a little prematurely. But uh, 
Let's see, let me check again. No, we haven't gotten any questions in the chat room. Um, my apologies to those of you watching live for the quality of the show today. It's, it's not up to our normal standards. Uh, for those of you watching in YouTube, my apologies for not having a, a better prepared show. Again, if, if you've joined us late, it was uh, it was a, a uh, it would have been a comedy, and maybe tomorrow I'll look back on it and, and laugh a little bit. But uh, it was it was amazing to to have a, a bad video driver. When I fired up uh, the the PC this morning, everything was stuttering, and tracked it back finally after about an hour and a half to a, a, a bad driver. And well, before I announced the product, I'm going to say that. Uh, I think that's what it was, and when I uninstalled it, it went away. But before I trashed that company, I, I want to double check and make sure. And then uh, to find out that uh, we had an internet problem. Uh, my, my cable internet went down. I, it's a local company called Mediacom. You may have that in your area. And I uh, got a great deal from them for $15 a month of, of 50 megs down and 5 megs up, which was just you know great for me. I was delighted. I mean, it was, the deal is only good for a year. I think it goes up to $60 after the end of the year. But that went down, and so I pulled out my trusty Verizon Wi-Fi card, knowing that I could get 4G now here in my little teeny town in southern Alabama, go figure, and fired it up, and I was getting 4G. Well, I wasn't getting 4G, but I had a connection, but I was getting about 0.3, 300K up, which, of course, is not to do a whole lot from with at all. Um, so I shut that down, and I fired up my Samsung Galaxy, which is a Verizon Verizon phone and uh, enabled it as a hotspot and for some reason was able to get a much, much better feed. And I say much, much better. It's about six or eight megs down and about two and a half megs up and very fluctuating. Uh, I think it's probably stabilized a little bit by, by this time in the show, but at the very beginning it was fluctuating about 50%, which is, is one of those reasons, you know, everybody talks about how much bandwidth do I need to, to stream? How much upstream bandwidth do I need? And the general recommendation is always, you know, add up what it is you think you're going to be streaming and double it. And that's going to give you some headroom. And today is a good explanation as to why you need to do, why, why you, you double it and do headroom is because that fluctuation in the Internet that happens, uh, you're, you're going to need it. And I certainly needed it today. Um, and then the last screw up, I guess we'll call it a screw up, was when uh, I went to stream to Bamboozer and... You know, Flash was streaming, Flash Media Live Encoder was streaming just fine. And I went to check it on another PC, and there's nothing there. No audio, no video. Uh, it's just not working. And reset everything, went back, you know, and basically do the configuration when, when it's not working. Just go back to the beginning and take it one step at a time all the way through. And I uh, went back to and checked the settings that I got from the cast, and I, since I knew I had a... a uh, a slower internet speed today. Generally, we'll do two streams up, one at 800K and one at, um, I think, 200 or 250. Um, and so we cut out the, the smaller stream and took the 800K stream back to 650 and then took the uh, took the, band, uh, the, the size that we're streaming down to uh, 640 by 360, so we're not getting our full 864 by 480. Uh, widescreen standard definition that we normally do. Uh, we will in the recording, if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing 864 by, by 480, but on the stream right now, it's just uh, 640 by 360. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess you would call that half of 720p. So, even that with the cast didn't work. And so I just bailed out and, and reactivated my Bamboozer account very quickly. And, and as those of you that know, Either you saw the link on the, the front of the web, web page, uh, website, or you picked it up in chat and were able to watch and listen today. So that's the story of, of how a variety of mistakes can all, all mound up on the same day. I hope you have learned from, from my troubles today, some of which I caused myself, no doubt. Other, other troubles were forced upon me. But uh, keep in mind, uh, this is, I don't know, show... 30 or something like that. I'm, I'm not keeping track by number. Uh, I think if you go to the notes in, in, in YouTube, it'll tell you what show number this is if you're watching it later. Um, but sooner or later, if you do enough shows, you're going to have this, uh, this whole symphony of errors come at you. 
uh, some of which are of your own making, some of which you have no control over. Um, but if you do it enough, the bad stuff is going to hit you. And, you know, fortunately for me, I had uh, not one, but two backup internet devices. And I had a backup to my CDN and had my bamboozer feed not worked right. I was all set to, to dump over to, to Ustream, um, you know, both bamboozer and, and Ustream being free services. So, you know, don't wait for those errors to happen uh, and make you look like a total novice. Uh, at least have a backup plan and maybe even a backup plan to your backup plan so that you can at least have something out on the air. Um, and so that's what we have here, something out on the air today. You can tell I didn't even get uh, my earbuds put in right. Um, so with all that, we're going to knock off, we're going to call this show uh, the, the show from hell. <laughs> But I appreciate you tuning in live, and I appreciate you watching on YouTube. If you have a question, um, shoot me a question at uh, Tom at that vidblaster guy dot com, and I would be delighted to answer your question. I will I will answer your question directly by email, and if I can use your question on the air, um, then I, I would love to do that because I think folks can learn from that, and I will send you a a small a small gift. Um, haven't figured out exactly what that'll be, but I'll send you a small gift and thanks for asking a good question. So if you've got a good question you've always wondered about, now is your opportunity. Um, also would ask you to uh, to follow us on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, at VidBlasterGuy. Didn't have room for the that, so it's just at VidBlasterGuy. And uh, we we tend to to post tweets about you know the pre-show starting and the and the post-show starting and things like that, and then time changes and other things that might be of interest. Um, and what else? What else? I guess that's about it. That's about it. Anyway, enjoy being part of your afternoon and your evening and your morning. I'm Tom Sinclair, that Bid Blaster guy, and I'm going to send you out with a little uh, Bid Blaster theme music. <laughs>